Hello, it's Booth here, and I'm talking about the wonderful, maddening programming language that's called C++. We're going to look at some C++ code and try and figure out what's going on. Then, we'll give ourselves an eye test using some LEDs connected to an Arduino. Are you ready? Let's get started. So, what is C++? It's easy to say that it's a programming language, but C++ is a lot of things. It's a way to structure data. It's a way to share code with other programmers. It's a way to get computers to do what we want. It's a language, it's a mathematical abstraction, but it's all kind of complicated. Today, we're going to look at it as a simple tool to get our Arduino to work. Let's look at some code starting at the top. This is the Blink example code that comes with the Arduino integrated development environment, also known as an IDE. As you can see, there's a lot of easy to read text. Sorry, that's not code. Those are comments from previous programmers to us. The IDE helpfully makes the text gray to show that they're comments. These kinds of comments start with a slash and star at the top and end with the star and slash at the bottom. What happens if we remove the slash star? Well, the IDE changes the color of the text to show that it's not a comment anymore. We're going to start butting heads with the compiler by removing that slash star. The C++ compiler loves to pick out mistakes that you've made, and it's going to see this one. So let's run the compiler by clicking this checkmark button at the top left of the window. We've angered the compiler, as you can see. It thinks the comments are now C++ code and doesn't like it. Let's make it happy by turning them back into comments. Ah, that's better. What if we remove the ending star slash and hit verify? The compiler tells us that we started a comment but didn't finish it. Let's put it back the way it was. So far, we've been working with block comments. There's another kind of comment called a line comment, and it starts with two forward slashes. You can see one of those just below the block comment. We can also convert our block comment into line comments like this. We can hit the verify button and see that the compiler is still happy. Feel free to use either comment style depending on what you need. So what's the point of these comments? Some people say, code is hard to write. It should be hard to read. But that's not true. Coding is a collaborative project done with friends, team members, or even people across the world. It's essential that you think of the people who might read your code and to give messages to them to help explain what's going on. I've been looking at some of the behind the scenes code that makes Arduino work, and the comments from programmers I've never met in parts of the world I've never been to have been immensely helpful. Moving past the comments, what's next in this file? we see a bunch of weird words and symbols. These symbols are marking out a block of code, and this kind of code block is called a function. The name, of course, is inspired by mathematics, and while there are some parallels, code functions are rarely used the same way as mathematical functions. Looking more closely at this function, we see the word void, the word setup, and some parentheses. The word setup is the function name, and it's always the second word in the function right before the parentheses. What about void and the parentheses? Um, let's ignore those for now. Just know that this setup function is as simple as we can make it. There will be lots of time later to explore more advanced function features. After the parentheses, we have an opening curly bracket, a bunch of stuff, and then a closing curly bracket. Everything between the two curly brackets is the code that runs when we run the function. All of these function parts are essential, and removing any one part will make the compiler quite angry. For example, let's remove void and click validate. As you can see, the compiler is unhappy now. Let's put that back. Feel free to see how the compiler reacts when you remove other parts of the function. OK, so why do we even need a setup function? Besides the fact that removing the setup function makes the compiler angry, the comment right before it helpfully explains that it runs once you reset or power on the board. Also, like the name says, it's a place for you to set up the Arduino. Before I talk about what the Blink program is setting up, though, let's also look at the loop function. As you can see, it's defined the same way as the setup function, just the name and the code are different. The comment helpfully informs us that it will run over and over again, so this is a good place for us to put our interactive code. This is where the fun starts. So what are we actually setting up? Inside the curly braces of the setup function, we have a comment and some weird line of text after that. The weird line of text is a command called pin mode. As the comment helpfully explains, 
This line commands the Arduino to configure the LED built-in pin as an output. This is also where every detail becomes important. Computers can't read your mind. They do what you tell them to, not what you wish they would do. Here, we put more info inside the parentheses to tell pin mode how to set the mode of the pin. The first item in the parentheses tells pin mode which pin to set, and the second item tells pin mode to make the pin into an output. These details need to be very precise. The rules for writing these commands are also quite strict. I can't change the capitalization of pin mode, for example. If I do, the compiler says that it hasn't been defined. I also can't add a space between pin and mode. That just confuses the compiler. And I definitely can't forget my semicolon. These are all common mistakes, and I'm sure you'll forget the semicolon a lot when you're just starting out, or if you're coming from another programming language that doesn't use semicolons. Let's mess around a bit. What happens if we remove this command? I expect that the light on the Arduino won't blink anymore. It compiles and uploads just fine. So let's look at the Arduino and it still lights up. Hmm. Oh, hi there. As usual, the programmer thinks he knows everything and then things don't work out the way he expects. I had to dive into the Arduino manual to figure out what was going on. Apparently, there's an extra feature in the Arduino called a pull-up resistor as being activated and supplying power to the LED, even when the pin, pin is not configured as an output. The pull-up resistor has a lot more resistance, so you can see it's not as bright as before. Now, back to the code. One command down, two to go. In the loop function, we see a digital write command and a delay command. Just like pin mode, digital write needs to know which pin to use. Here, we tell it to use LED built-in. We also see the word high in one digital write command and low in the other. These two commands work together to turn the LED on and off. In digital electronics, we generally have two voltage levels, high and low. High means you have power and is a digital number one, and low means you don't have power and is a digital zero. In this circuit, the LED lights up when we make the pin high, and it goes out when we make the pin low. What happens if we remove digital write? If we remove the one that goes high, it's pretty clear that the LED won't turn on anymore. If we remove the one that goes low, the LED won't turn off. So what does the delay command do? It just makes the Arduino wait. The number in the parentheses represents the number of milliseconds to delay, so the number 1000 represents a full second. And what if we remove the first delay? The light will appear to not turn on at all. And if we remove the second one, the light will appear to not turn off. Great! We made it through the entire code file and figured out what everything does. Now, let's have some fun. What happens if we make the delay shorter to, say, 5 milliseconds? It looks like the light isn't blinking anymore, although my camera picks up a slight flicker that my eyes can't see. Go ahead and try this eye test. Set the delay smaller and smaller until you can't see the light blink anymore. That's not all we can do with this setup. Let me add another LED with the exact same resistor connected directly to 5 volt power. See that it's brighter than the original LED? We've discovered that a flickering LED is not as bright as a fully powered LED. This also means that we can make an LED brighter or dimmer by adjusting the flicker. I can make the LED dimmer by making it spend less time on and more time off. Here's what the LED looks like when I turn it on for just one millisecond and turn it off for 10 milliseconds in each loop. This is actually really useful. The technical term for this is pulse width modulation, or PWM, and it's commonly used to give you fine control of motors. Your computer, for example, is using PWM right now to control how fast or slow to run its cooling fans. So what did we do? We took a look at the C++ code in the Blink tutorial. We learned about comments and functions and learned some important commands. Then we played around with the code to give ourselves an eye test. Well, we played with turning the LED on and off until we couldn't see it blink. Then we played with the timing to make the LED brighter and dimmer, just like PWM controls for motors. I hope you liked my video. If you did, like and subscribe for more videos like this, and have a great day.